Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today we are at day 33 of our complete DevOps course and in this class we are going to see how to deploy our first application in Kubernetes. So before watching this video, I'll highly recommend you to watch the previous videos day 30, 31 and 32. The reason why I ask everyone to watch these videos is because from Docker to Kubernetes, like, you know, before you start your journey with Kubernetes, you have to understand the differences between Docker and Kubernetes. This is one part of it. And after that, you should also understand two things. One is the architecture of Kubernetes. And the next thing is how to install Kubernetes, right? So we covered three topics in day 30, 31 and 32. So if you don't have the knowledge of these things, then I will recommend you to not watch this video, go back and watch the videos and then come back to it because only then you will understand today's concept. So from day 30, I have been stressing on few points where Kubernetes is better than Docker and why people move to Docker, uh, Kubernetes. One is because Kubernetes is a cluster. Two is Kubernetes offers you scaling, that is auto scaling. Kubernetes offers you auto healing, right? And Kubernetes also offers something which is very important, a enterprise level behavior, right? So using Kubernetes, you can support a lot of things for your containers. So these are the four primary things. And to start with Kubernetes, to get or to achieve all of these things, you have to learn about few terminologies, okay? So like we learned about the terminologies in Docker in one of our previous classes, similarly, we should understand few concepts in Kubernetes before we go into it. So I'm not going to talk about the architecture of Kubernetes here because we already covered it, but I'm going to introduce you to few things which will make your understanding on Kubernetes better because I don't want to directly jump onto you and explain like, you know, what is a pod in Kubernetes and how to deploy a pod, how to install your application. It will hardly take me 15 minutes to do that, but I will properly explain you the basics and then we will go with the demo. Okay, so that your fundamentals are clear. Firstly, we are moving from Docker to Kubernetes, right? I mean, we are moving our thing from containers to container orchestration environment. So in Kubernetes, the lowest level of deployment is a pod. Okay. So in Kubernetes, you cannot directly deploy a container. In Docker, what you are doing is you are building a container and you are deploying a container, right? In Kubernetes also, we will use these containers that you have deployed in Docker because end of the day, whether it is Kubernetes or whether it is Docker, the end goal is to deploy your applications in containers, right? So that is the concept of containerization. But what Kubernetes says is, okay, don't deploy your application and container as is, but deploy to me as a pod. Now, what is pod? Why we should deploy your container as a pod? Why can't you directly deploy as a container in Kubernetes as well? So this has to be your fundamental question, right? Because once you start learning Kubernetes, the very first thing that you will see is people talk about pod. Now, if in Docker, if you are installing your applications using containers, why you have to install in Kubernetes using pods? What is it and why is it different? Okay, so now basically a pod is described Okay, in terms of definition, a pod is described as a definition on or definition of how to run a container. Okay, so what does this mean? Let's say in Docker, whenever you want to run a container, what you would do is basically you would say Docker run minus D or minus T or minus IT followed by the name of the container. Then what you would follow, I mean the name of the image, then you would pass minus P to do some port mapping. Then you would say minus V to do some mount volume, uh, volume mounts. Then if you have some network, you would say minus hyphen FN network and you would pass the network detail. So in Docker, you are basically passing all of these arguments to run a container, right? In command line. Whereas in Kubernetes, what you will do is you will pass those specifications in the pod.yaml file. Okay. So in Kubernetes, you basically have a wrapper or you basically have a concept that is similar to container, but it abstracts the user uh, defined commands in pod.specification YAML. So if it is confusing, don't worry about it. I'm going to explain it in a very clear way. So 
what you do in kubernetes is you instead of container you will deploy a pod okay now a pod can be a single container or it can be multiple containers i'll tell you why a pod can be multiple containers what are the advantages but first for now just go with a single container okay so assume you are building a pod with one single container what you will do is similar to docker end of the day pod is also exactly like a docker container the only difference if when you have one single container the only difference is here instead of you using a command called docker run uh, and then you pass all the different arguments you will try to put all of them in a yaml file okay so inside the yaml file you will say something like this api version is uh, v1 then you provide the name of this container uh, sorry of this pod and all of these things then you will provide the specification so inside the specification you will provide all of the details of the container okay so you have multiple containers option here and inside which you provide specification of your containers so don't worry once you look into the definition or the yaml file of the pod you will understand oh okay it is exactly similar to your container but the only thing is instead of command line you are trying to put everything in a yaml file that's the only difference now why kubernetes has to uh, deal with this complexity uh, you you might ask me a question that abhishek if uh, things are going well with docker container and you can deploy everything as a container in docker platform why kubernetes has introduced this complexity why you have to run things in kubernetes using yaml files so the thing is kubernetes like i told you is a enterprise level platform and what it want to do is it want to bring declarative capabilities okay so or it want to build a standardization so the thing is you can put these yaml files okay in kubernetes we deal everything with yaml files okay so whether it is pod resource whether it is deployment resource whether it is services we are going to talk about all of these things in future but everything will be written in yaml files only okay so you have to master yaml files uh, you don't have to like you know mug up how to write a pod uh, yaml file you don't have to mug up how to write a deployment yaml file don't worry about it we have bunch of examples and everybody make use of these examples only like whether it's a senior devops engineer junior De devops engineer everybody use this example from official kubernetes documentation or from some samples but the thing that i want to mention is you have to understand how yaml files are written so only then you will become expert in kubernetes because every day we deal with yaml files in kubernetes okay now so like i told you pod is nothing but one or group of containers so why it has to be one or group of containers so most of the times a pod is a single container but there are some cases where you have some you know sidecar containers or you have some init containers so what are these things like these are the things that support your actual container just to give you an example let's say you have a container okay you have your application deployed in a container and this wants to read some config files or you know this wants to read some uh, uh, user related files from another container so in such cases what you will do is instead of creating two different uh, pods in kubernetes you can put both of them in a single pod and what pod says is if you put one or two containers or multiple containers inside a single pod i will ensure that kubernetes will ensure that both of the containers will have some advantages so that's why you put one or group of containers inside a single pod when it is required what are the advantages so if you put group of containers in a single pod okay let's say you have container a and container b and if you put both of them in one single pod in kubernetes then kubernetes will allow you shared networking shared storage okay so this way what happens is container a and container b inside a single pod can talk to each other using local host that means to say if uh, container a wants to talk to container b port uh, 3 uh, 3000 so it can simply access using local host 3000 okay so the application can be directly accessed and the information can be retrieved or if both of them wants to share some files okay so even in such cases because both of them are in one single pod they can share the files as well so that is one of the reasons why people put multiple containers but it is a very rare case 
the usual practice for this is to create some sidecar containers or init containers which is an advanced topic which i'll explain going ahead when we talk about service mesh or when we talk about uh, you know things like uh, some advanced concepts of Kubernetes. I will talk about why uh, you put multiple containers inside a pod. But for now, if you understand that there is a pod and inside this pod of Kubernetes, you have a container. So container and pod. So basically what Kubernetes does is it allocates a cluster IP address to this pod. Okay, and you can access the applications inside the containers using this pod cluster IP address. So IP addresses are not generated for the containers, but they are generated for the pods. Now don't worry or don't overthink the concept here because it is fairly simple. A pod is basically a wrapper that Kubernetes has created for a container to make the life of DevOps engineers easy. Because when we try to deal with uh, containers like hundreds of containers, thousands of containers in production, if you have a wrapper like pod, which can define everything in a YAML file, okay, which can say like if a developer can go to a Git repository or a DevOps engineer can go to a Git repository and look for the pod.yaml file he will understand everything about the container that, okay, so this container is running on, the application is running inside it on port 80. It has a volume mount. Then, uh, you know, what is the networking of it? Or you will understand multiple details that you have for your Docker container. So Kubernetes has created a wrapper for it. Okay. So most of the cases when you are dealing with a pod, you deal with a single container and, uh, you know, you access the pod, sorry, you access the container using the cluster IP address that Kubernetes gave for pod. So who is giving this cluster IP address? If you watch the previous videos, kubeproxy is generating this cluster IP address. Okay. Perfect. So this is the concept of pod in Kubernetes. So very first application that we are going to deploy, we are going to deploy as a pod. Okay. Don't worry. We are going to, when we do the demo, you will understand this e even in a better way. But one more concept that I wanted to introduce here is cube CTL. What is cube CTL? So kubectl is nothing but like for Docker, whenever you are trying to run any commands, you have the Docker CLI, right? In Kubernetes, you have something called as kubectl. So kubectl is command line for Kubernetes. Okay. So what is it? It's a command line tool for Kubernetes. So you can directly interact with the Kubernetes clusters. Let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster and inside that you have 10 nodes. Okay, so to understand how many nodes are there inside your Kubernetes cluster, you can just use this kubectl command and say kubectl get nodes. Okay, so how you will understand these commands, what are the different options, I'll show you, don't worry. So if you want to see how many pods are there, you can simply say kubectl get pods. If you want to see how many deployments are there, kubectl get deployment. If you want to delete a deployment, you want to create a deployment. So for such cases to interact with Kubernetes, we have kubectl. So today's class, we will first install kubectl. Then we will create a Kubernetes cluster that is minikube. Why we will create a minikube Kubernetes cluster? Because in last class, I told you, I showed you how to create a Kubernetes cluster on AWS using COPS, but for this, you need to have some free credits on AWS. You can also run EKS or any other systems, but for that, you need some free credits. So if you don't want to spend on your Kubernetes clusters, you can learn them using a local Kubernetes cluster that is Minikube or K3S or uh, Kind or any Kubernetes clusters. Installation of all of them are fairly simple. Don't worry about the installations at all, but the only thing is, when you use this local Kubernetes clusters, they are not as equal as your full blown Kubernetes full blown Kubernetes clusters. But for our demo purposes or for our learning purposes, because we don't run huge applications, we are not running applications that are CPU and memory intensive. So even these clusters are fine. And we are not going to set up any high availability, all of these things at this point. So you can use Minikube so that you don't have to spend on your AWS. Okay, so first thing we will see is how to install kubectl. Then we will see how to create a Kubernetes cluster on your local using Minikube. I have a complete video as well where you can refer to this complete video. I'll share the link in the description. If you find today's video 
uh, is going fast with respect to installation don't worry you can refer to this complete video so kubectl mini cube and then we will see how to deploy a pod which is our first application on kubernetes okay is the things clear till now let me stop sharing here and let me proceed with the <coughs> demo part so i stop sharing then let me share my terminal okay just a second perfect so now my terminal let me increase the font a bit perfect so now you guys are able to see my terminal as well right so the very first thing that we will do is start with the installation of kubectl so to start with the installation of kubectl just go to your browser search for kubectl don't do anything just say kubectl installation you will go to this specific page called install tool kubernetes click on it then choose the platform do you want to install kubectl on linux macos or windows click on for example i am using macos let me click on macos then there are multiple options do you want to install it on intel or silicon chip so silicon chip is nothing but your mac uh, m1 m2 or your arm processors these are related to silicon chip but if you are using the old mac uh, then you are basically on intel so just copy the script and your kubernetes insta uh, kubectl installation is done so this is very very simple just copy the script just execute it you will see that the kubectl is installed so it barely takes uh, a minute or so for the entire installation now once you have the kubectl installed just search kubectl version so your kubectl is up and running perfect after this like i told you we'll proceed with the installation of a local kubernetes cluster so here there are multiple options you can use mini cube k3s kind you can use uh, a micro k8 so there are multiple options but in my case the videos uh, that i am going to demonstrate i will prefer mini cube because many many people or many subscribers already are using mini cube if i uh, teach them in kind then they have to uh, do some additional network settings so that's why i'll proceed with mini cube but just to let you know that uh, on my local setup or whenever i am practicing things i prefer kind so once you learn kubernetes then you can also move towards kind but for easy way to start with kubernetes start with mini cube but why kind is better is because kind is basically kubernetes in docker that means to say your kubernetes nodes or your kubernetes entire setup as is done as docker containers okay this is a slightly advanced concept how kind handles kubernetes clusters but you can create hundreds of kubernetes clusters even on your personal laptop using kind whereas with mini cube it's not possible okay but for now let's bother only about one single cluster so let's use mini cube so firstly install mini cube so to install mini cube again go to your browser search for mini cube you will go to your mini cube uh, kubernetes page click on it so you will find the installation uh, suggestion where you will be asked with your operating system similarly if you are in linux uh, click on linux then be very careful with the architecture so if you are using uh, x86 64 use this architecture if you are using arm 64 then click on this button arm 64 is a arm processor so most of the times people on linux must be using this x86 64 unless you uh, change your configuration or you are using ibm p, p cluster or ibm z cluster uh, sorry uh, p uh, operating system or z operating system so in my case i am using mac os and uh, you know i am using the arm 64 processor so as soon as i change this you will see that there is a change in the command so let me copy these things here and let me execute so as soon as i execute this one you will see that mini cube is installed the reason why i did not do is i already have mini cube but the installation is that's it like you just in install these two commands and your mini cube installation is done you can just search for mini cube and you will notice that your mini cube installation is done perfect so i have my cube ctl i have my mini cube my cube ctl sorry uh, i just have my mini cube i have to proceed with creating a cluster okay so what is mini cube mini cube is a uh, command line tool that will allow you to create a kubernetes cluster but right now your mini cube is only created your kubernetes cluster is not created so to do that the simple command is mini cube start so if you just do mini cube start your kubernetes cluster will be started but if you are using mac or if you are using uh, windows 
understand that how minikube creates a cluster is it will create a virtual machine first on top of this virtual machine it will create a single node kubernetes cluster okay what is it single node kubernetes cluster like i told you in production or in uh, you know real time scenarios we will use multi node kubernetes cluster where we will have a master node or we will have three master nodes and we will have three worker nodes four worker nodes 100 worker nodes whatever is the requirement but in general when you are doing high availability you will have three master nodes and you will have n number of worker nodes but because minikube like i told you it's a demo cluster or you know it's a test cluster your practice cluster so it just creates one virtual machine on top of it it runs a single node kubernetes cluster so to create a virtual machine on top of your mac os or on top of your uh, windows firstly you need to have a virtualization platform most of the time it comes by default so if you are on mac all that you need to do is just run this command minikube uh, so okay so you can just use hyperkit this is a command okay so hyperkit comes by default and uh, so what i'm doing minikube start pass the memory requirements whatever is the requirement that required and then hyphen hyphen driver is equals to hyperkit so here you can change the values you can change it to virtual box you can change it to hyperkit whatever is your requirement okay so let's say you are not bothered about these things uh, today's class we are only learning about the basics of kubernetes so in such cases even if you do this simple minikube start that is more than enough okay so the only difference is if you are just doing minikube start then the kubernetes cluster will by default use your docker driver okay but docker driver better uh, you don't use it when you move to advanced kubernetes concepts in such cases just use this command okay where you will use minikube start and hyphen hyphen driver as hyperkit okay so now uh, i think i have spent enough time in explaining how to install kubernetes cluster now my kubectl is configured to understand that just say kubectl get nodes okay when you do kubectl get nodes you will notice that kubectl is already connected to your kubernetes cluster and it is saying that okay there is one kubernetes cluster that is running sorry there is one node that is running which is called minikube node uh, so minikube uh, reference that node as minikube node and then the status is ready and this node itself is your control plane and data plane okay because you just have one node architecture here awesome so minikube is done kubernetes is installed my nodes are up and running so what do you have to wait for so you can directly start with installation of pod but how to do it so again go to your kubernetes documentation and search for pod okay so if you see this like i told you pod is basically a yaml file okay so you can simply copy this yaml file because we are just starting with kubernetes and even once you advance with kubernetes also you have to take this examples as reference because nobody is going to uh, mug up these things as it will not give you any advantage learning this specific uh, things inside your yaml file is of no use all that you need to understand is like you know copy this specific thing even for your future cases and just understand where do you have to update your commands okay so yaml file will remain same whether you are creating one pod file whether you are creating tomorrow you might be creating pod for different application day after tomorrow you might be creating pod for another application the definition will be the same only thing that will change is these values so these are all the keys and the values will change okay so today let us try with the default image that is provided in the example called nginx but if you want to replace you can replace this image with any application that we have created in our previous applications or in our previous docker uh, demos so we did a lot of docker demos where we created my first docker or you know we created some uh, golang based applications we created some python based applications so that's fine you can use any of those images or you can go with the default example that kubernetes is offering you here because we just uh, wanted to run our first pod and see how pod works right so here name of the image is nginx 1.14.2 you can change it like i told you and then whenever you make this modification make sure you make this change as well so here the image that he is uh, giving i mean kubernetes is giving us it says that the container port is 80 but in your case your application container port can be 8000 it can be 9000 it can be anything so modify it accordingly okay but in this case the image is this one and the container port is this one so 
let us try to first compare this with the docker command okay so that everybody will be clear because you people are coming from docker so let us try to debug and see what is the equivalent command for this in docker so here we are just saying docker run we are trying to run it so docker run minus d so we are running it in the background and then hyphen hyphen image you don't have to give image in docker you can simply say uh, nginx this one hyphen hyphen name what is the name we are giving name as nginx so this is the name and then minus p 80 to 80 so this is the equivalent command to pod okay so the reason why i just explained you in this way is to make you understand that like i told you a pod is basically a specification or a specification on of how to run your container so that's why i just showed you how the equivalent command looks in docker save this one so now your kubectl will come into picture okay so use this command called kubectl which is similar to docker cli here this is a kubernetes cli the command you will say is create minus f pod.yaml so as soon as you do this you will see that your pod is created that means your application is created so how do you see in docker you will see docker ps so here you will say kubectl get pods okay so you see that the kubernetes pod is running if you do minus o wide then it will print the entire details of this pod it said this is the ip address you can simply do curl and then you can execute this specific ip address you will notice that the uh, okay so in this case you have to log into the cluster right so like previously if you are not exposing this application from docker container to external application we log into the container and we execute it right the curl command or something so in this case you have to log into your kubernetes cluster so the command is easy just do minikube ssh okay so you will log into your kubernetes cluster if you are using a real-time Kubernetes cluster, what you will do is instead of Minikube SSH, you will SSH to the master or any worker node IP address. And then you will just do curl to this specific thing and you will notice that your application is running. It says, thank you for using Nginx. So your first ever Kubernetes application is created and you were able to execute as well using kubectl get pods minus O wide. Now the first question that you should ask me is, Abhishek, how do you remember all of these commands? So I have been working on Kubernetes for a long time, but for somebody to start with, there is a very good reference called Kubernetes or kubectl cheat sheet. Okay, just, just search for kubectl cheat sheet. You will see this specific page, go to this page and you have bunch of Kubernetes commands. Okay, so just go through this uh, specific page whenever you uh, want to find any specific command you are not understanding. So even I reference this page because it has bunch of examples and all of these examples are very very handy for us to understand. Okay, how uh, let's say I want to search one command with respect to uh, get the pods. So I can search for get pods and it gives me all options. So you can it says that kubectl get pods get in all the namespaces, get uh, your complete description of the pod. So all of these things are very much provided here. So reference kubectl cheat sheet. Okay, so things are fine. I have just installed my first pod. My pod is running. Everything looks good. I was even able to access the pod once I SSH into the cluster. Now what is next? So you were able to do this. Similarly, you can also do kubectl delete uh, pod, provide the name of the pod. Okay, so your pod will be deleted. Okay, so kubectl is basically lifecycle. But what is next? So there are two things next. One is, <clears throat> like I told you, this pod.yaml is a specification of your Docker container, how a Docker container has to be run. So here you can enhance this specification as well. Like I told you here, you can add more, uh, for example, volumes. Okay, the syntax is not correct. Don't worry about it at all. You can add... Uh, volume mounts so these things we will learn as we go ahead because i don't want to complicate these things and explain you at this point of time itself uh, how to add persistent volumes how to add volumes how to add volume mounts to your pod a lot of these things are not required at this point because we are just learning kubernetes so for now understood uh, you understood how to deploy your first application the next thing you have to ask me is how to add auto scaling auto healing 
so these were the topics i was telling you that this is how kubernetes is better than docker or any container platform so you should ask me next question is how to add this capabilities because this is the reason why we started learning kubernetes because kubernetes is an enter enterprise platform which we already saw why looking at the architecture and all of the things now the next thing is kubernetes provides auto scaling or auto healing how do you get this to my application so if you ask me this question, Abhishek, how to get this auto healing, auto scaling capabilities to my application? So the answer is what you will do is on top of the pod, you have a wrapper called deployment in Kubernetes. Okay. So you have to use your deployment in Kubernetes to get these features like auto healing and auto scaling, which will be our tomorrow's topics. Okay. So to start with Kubernetes, you also, have, you always have to start with pod, but to get these advanced capabilities, we will move from pod to deployment. Now, you can ask me why we have to learn pod at all because we have to move to deployment because deployment is just a wrapper. Okay, so tomorrow when I show you how to write a deployment.yaml file, you yourself will understand, oh, okay. So deployment and pod are pretty much same. Only thing is we are just changing the kind here. Okay, so here instead of kind pod, we are just modifying it and we are just saying it as kind deployment and we add more things like we add uh, some other things like template and we say, okay, so this is my pod template specification, but more or less what a Kubernetes deployment does is it acts as a wrapper on top of your pod, which is going to be your way to deploy your applications. Okay, so it is going to be your way to deploy apps in Kubernetes in real time production scenarios. You will not deploy pods, but you will actually deploy your deployments or stateful sets or daemon sets, these things, which we will learn. But to understand those things, you need to have your foundations correct. That is, you need to understand how does a pod works in Kubernetes. Okay. So today we understood how does a pod work. We logged into the pod. We uh, try to uh, execute the pod, right? All of these things are done. Final things that I have to show you is how to verify the application. Let's say you have some issues with respect to the applications that you are uh, running. So kubectl also offers some commands like you can say kubectl. Uh, let me create the pod one more time kubectl. So the pod is created now using the kubectl itself. You can debug your applications like you know, you can say kubectl logs followed by the name of the pod. Okay, so once you provide the name of the pod here, you will see the logs of your application. Okay. Uh, kubectl logs pod nginx right so as soon as you do it you will see the logs oh, okay so it is still not running don't worry about it but using kubectl logs you can verify the logs of your uh, kubernetes pod and uh, using kubectl uh, get pods as you get the pod information what you can also do is you can just say kubectl describe okay followed by the name of your uh, pod so if you do this, you will notice that it will print all the information of your pod. So what is uh, the current status of your pod? So if your interviewer is asking you, how do you debug a pod? You can simply say them that I use a command called kubectl describe pod using which I get the status of everything inside a pod, whether the pod is currently running, if there is any error, what is the error in the pod? If there is any issue with the pod, what is the issue with the pod? So you will get all that information with the pod. And once you understand it, you can also get the information of kubectl logs pod followed by the name of the pod. If your application is throwing uh, some logs, you can also, uh, sorry, what is the issue here? Oh, sorry, kubectl logs nginx. So if there is any logs, currently this application, the demo application that Kubernetes has shared us, it is not throwing any logs, but in real time in production, your application will throw the logs where you can see those logs using the kubectl logs nginx. Okay. So let's say if i log into this uh, specific pod one more cluster one more time and if i execute uh, the http server or the nginx server you'll notice the logs even uh, with respect to kubectl logs nginx but for now that's okay so the interview question is how do you debug pods or how do you debug applications uh, issues in kubernetes so your two go to commands would be kubectl describe name of the pod nginx and the next command would be kubectl logs name of the pod so this will be your two go to commands. Describe will explain your complete details of your pod. What is the issue with the pod and all. And to verify the logs of your pod, you can use the kubectl logs command. So this is the video for today. I request everyone who is watching this video to practice 
everything that we have learned today because going ahead the complexity will increase we will go in, we will uh, like i told you we will learn about deployments we will learn about services we will talk about auto healing auto scaling all of these things for which it is very important for you guys to practice today's session and also watch the previous videos on kubernetes okay so if you like today's video click on the like button don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues i'll see you in the next video take care everyone bye